Ladies and gentlemen, today we continue our investigative series that focuses on the final warnings that were left behind by the late Dr. Thomas R. Horn in what now resides in what would become his very last book. Welcome to Skywatch TV. Hello everybody and welcome back to Skywatch TV. I'm Joe Artis Horn. Before we dive into today's program, if you missed this short trailer last week, watch this. In 2023, following one of the most legendary and prophetic ministerial careers the world has ever seen, my father, the late Dr. Thomas R. Horn, began what would become his final book. After collaborating with Defender Publishing's Ali Anderson and myself, he had just completed his master manuscript before his untimely passing in October of last year. During his final conversations, he was still emphasizing that this message had to get out, that it was of paramount importance that the world was made aware of what was coming. Society has absolutely no idea what they're embracing, what they've invited in, even welcomed it as the future savior of humanity. This will ultimately be the one thing that brings about our own demise. If humanity survives, it will unequivocally alter life as we know it. By the time people realize the danger that they've embraced, it will be too late. It will have become unstoppable. Updating social credit score, citizen 1934265. One final book. One final warning. The world is not ready for what is coming. Dr. Thomas R. Horn, Joe Artis Horn, Ali Anderson. Summoning the Demon, coming March 2024 from Defender Publishing. Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast. Wow, absolutely mind-boggling. Before we get into today's discussion, though, let me introduce who's here with us to help us champion this very important and timely final warning from the late Dr. Thomas R. Horn. Our dear friends, Derek and Sharon Gilbert, Allie Anderson, my beautiful mother, Nita Horn, my beautiful wife, Catherine Horn, <laughs> and Donna Howell. Friends, if you missed last week, go back, we were barely scraping the tip of the surface on what resides now in the final book from Dr. Thomas Horn, Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast by Dr. Thomas R. Horn, myself, and Ali Anderson. Go back as we reveal part of what was a conversation that Dr. Thomas Horn had with artificial intelligence for himself that ended up being the premise wherein he then launched this massive research and wrote the book. As I said last week, trying to collapse the, the conversation around artificial intelligence to a soundbite or a four-week series is like trying to cover all of the Bible. Yeah. It's expansive nature. About the time you set one premise, it has so many roots and possibilities. Yep. In some ways, the people here at Skywatch TV agree that much of this technology is already here, it's being mm -hmm. perfected now, and it is further than most people already know in terms of its development and its application militarily all around the world. Young people interacting with artificial intelligence on their mobile devices, yeah. developing relationships now with what feel very much like sentient, almost spousal or romantic interactions. But Ali, the general consensus in terms of the public and the way they view artificial intelligence, people hear those words and to different people it means different things. For some, AI is a movie that was done about a decade ago. <laughs> Others, artificial intelligence, they start to play out this very Terminator 2-esque, 
Judgment Day. It is the apocalypse. They do not trust this technology at all. There tends to be a blend of all of these responses, and yet most of the experts that are leading the framework, the development, the people that are pushing forth artificial intelligence and its use in everything from banking to every apparatus of our lives are also saying we don't really trust it, but it's a form of arms race. And we're not going to be the only country that doesn't develop this. We'll fall irreparably behind, mm -hmm. Yeah. right? Right. So they also agree there's no stopping it. <laughs> right. What do you think in terms of the mixed audience, the developers, they say we don't trust it, but we have no choice but to proceed uh, in any case. What do you feel the consensus and public response to AI right now is? Well, there are a lot of people making different statements about it, but you do notice certain themes across the board that keep emerging. And these aren't coming strictly from religious people or strictly from conspiratorial thinkers. Mm -hmm. This is a mixed group of people, secular, liberal, conservative, all the different crowds that are weighing in on AI at all, you start noticing these recurring themes. One is that this is different from other previous industrial revolutions. A new kind of technology would emerge, but it always had a plug you could pull and man could figure out how to do without it. Exactly. Right. And AI is rapidly surpassing that, if not already, which we'll get into that. We probably have already past that point. This is interesting to me, and we talk about this more in the book, and we will talk about it in the upcoming weeks, but there are people who are comparing it to a religion, and they are saying that a sentient right. or even a non-sentient AI could become elevated into a godlike status. And that is something that I find uh, very alarming for one thing, but also it's something to definitely be having conversations about. Mm -hmm. There are people who are saying we are way too reliant already mm -hmm. and that that's getting worse. And you may think, well, I don't really rely on AI. I don't really do anything with it. I've got one little game on my phone. There are so many ways that you probably rely on it every single day and don't realize that's right. some facility that you are relying on or a utility grid or something that you're counting on. Right. That's right. It's already impacting mm -hmm. your life in ways you're unaware of. One thing that is definitely being said over and over and over is that actual technology is emerging faster than the ethical parameters can be set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the That's problem is that these companies who slow down, they may come up with something new and they may say, hold on, let's stop for a minute and think about exactly what we're doing here. A competing company that comes up with the same or, or slightly different but very similar right. technology races ahead and becomes the first to introduce this on the market. So what happens is those who stop to pause for ethics right. end yep. up being punished by falling behind the curve of technological introduction. Yep. Right. Yes. So it's, it's, it's really away. a problem, and any kind of legislation takes so long to set into place right. yep. that by the time they have legislated, this is what we'll do with this form of technology, mm -hmm. that's like old news. Right. It's like this year putting legislation on a laptop. But you Ten have years to remember, ago. <laughs> too, that any time control for technology comes along, it essentially controls human beings. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the way to control all the people keeps True. them safe because mm -hmm. the technology mm -hmm. is racing ahead. Our kids need to be protected, mm -hmm. which means that free speech is gone. Free yep. movement is gone. Free will will soon be gone. That's right. Yep. So when you get into the ethics of this thing, this opens a massive Pandora's box, a genie that's been pulled out of the bottle that cannot be put back in. And I'll just give you a few examples for those that are watching this program that, that are still, what is AI? They talked about AI last week. I'm still not sure. For the broad bird's eye look at what AI is, please go back to last week's program because I spent a few minutes kind of explaining what this decentralized series of supercomputers is, how it works now, and why people are using it and becoming quickly dependent upon it. Right. But when you get into civil liberties, how do you distinguish the difference between stealing someone's identity in the form of video fraud? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are technologies already that are becoming memes. This is becoming so normal that you can just be scrolling on normal social media platforms and see videos. You don't know that they truly are or are not the actor or the person being portrayed. Right. This technology exists now. I mentioned this last week. There's a lot more than three parts, but fundamentally, keeping this very broad stroke, there were three parts that I shared on the set of Simply His mm -hmm. several months ago. This was not something I had planned to share that day. As I mentioned last week, we were actually talking about the use of pornography on digital devices and how today's teenagers and yeah. people abroad have access to all kinds of ways of using artificial intelligence now that is completely changing the landscape of its almost irreversible addictive mm -hmm. principles mm -hmm. yep. without divine intervention from the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. What 
people grappled with 20 years ago in, in terms of a magazine they might sneak home mm -hmm. and hide in the garage when dad wasn't looking. Now they've got access to very three-dimensional, very tailorable, drag and drop customizable experiences from the comfort of any digital mm -hmm. device. Back in the day, those magazines were covered in brown paper yeah, too. Yeah, right, covered in brown paper. You had to be a certain legal age to even interact. So I was on the set of Simply His, and as I was working out some of my concerns, I believe the Holy Spirit gave me what I call a download. It was a three-part, and I was kind of working it out in real time, and I took for granted that maybe there weren't others in the room that had considered part two and a half and three, <laughs> until I, and I'm going to reveal them in just a moment, until I got a text from Donna Howell later that evening, and she said, I am still mulling over what you said in your big three-part reveal today. Yeah. And that was when I took it to my father, who said this must be a part of summoning the demon, artificial intelligence, and the image of the beast. Phase one is one that most people already accept. This is not the clever one. This is the one that most people would sure, you know, nod along with you. Surely we're there now. It's, it's becoming a problem. It's not clever. I see this every day. I've already thought about this myself. And that is how artificial technology and deep fakes raise alarm in terms of the identity of the person that's being hacked. So for example, as this technology becomes more and more accessible, there will come a day very soon where you might see video of Joe Horn, a prominent spiritual leader, somebody in politics, and it is a leaked video of them interacting with a child inappropriately or perhaps committing a crime through surveillance cameras or perhaps there's photographs or hot mics that caught them saying something on audio. And at first the reaction of this from the public is gonna be, oh, razzmatazz, oh my word, he did? And by the time people lawyer up, rush to the podium to fix mm -hmm. this mess, the damage to their reputation will mostly already be effectively mm -hmm. annihilated. Yep. It'll always be for generations. Wasn't he the guy though that stole money or didn't he? Wasn't he the one that got photographed with so-and-so? But very quickly people will catch on to this and you can see this playing out right now with fake news. Mm -hmm. People will very quickly become immune to this type of sensational reaction, very quickly. You're gonna need two or three, maybe a handful of major cases where this really impacted a person's brand, their yeah. equity, their persona, their company, their intellectual properties, their personhood, their identity, their ministry, yeah. whatever, before people become immune to this. Mm -hmm. Now this is dangerous because it leads to phase two of this. News has cried wolf so many times, people don't believe anything right. anymore. That's true. Right. The numbing of Back. everyone hyperventilating over and over and over again will lead to this dangerous phase where people become almost incapable of empathy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I saw him and I saw what he did, but you know, everything at this point is fake. Fake news, fake politicians, fake elections, fake everything, everything's fake. Who's to say, right? You can't right. really know what truth is. A lot of people already believe that we're living in a powder keg of politically motivated, weaponized three letters of the alphabet agencies of the government, the DOJ, the FBI, the CIA, that maybe there's a political persuasion behind some of these organizations and what they might be willing to do to tarnish the reputation of an undesirable mm -hmm. who does not fit the status quo, mm -hmm. who's not in alignment with the approved narrative or talking points that the mainstream media is propagating. Is this making sense? Yes. Yep. There's a really dangerous side effect to phase two. And that is, this will actually aid and abet and provide cover for those committing actual crimes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. People will no longer fear the normal mechanisms of restraint. For example, if someone had caution with an extramarital affair that they might get caught, somebody might videotape them or catch them on video, or even a hot mic. They're tempted to say something maybe political or racist, but they don't for fear that somebody somewhere might be miking them. Right, right. Now, because of the frenzy, everybody's hyperventilating, everybody's tripping over themselves to deep fake this, deep fake that. As the, as the populace becomes more and more immune, people won't even fear what actually leaks. Right. Now, I could get into a sub-caveat of this, how this will probably more or less benefit the elites rather than the undesirables. How they will use this, well, you, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I, I understand the photograph, but, you know, let's be real. There's deep fakes everywhere. And on they will go. There are currently right now online pictures of Donald Trump and Joe Biden out camping and having festivities together that do not exist. These photographs are absolutely impossible to decipher as fraud. You mean Trump really didn't ride the T-Rex? <laughs> oh, I am so disappointed. 
Can you imagine investigators, honest investigators, or our judiciary systems that are in place when people start to sue for defamation, mm -hmm. for libel, for misuse of my character, for misrepresentation, for literal brand equity loss as they've painted me this way and painted me that way and it's not true and everybody's lawyering up and it becomes this massive mud show where there's mud all over the walls. There is no way to adjudicate this and it's going to call for new forms of identity protection, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Companies compromised. Deeds oh. to homes being absolutely irreparably damaged. Parents calling schools when they're not actually calling schools. Vocal I uh -huh. identity theft is already something that kidnappers and traffickers have already started using to trick people into wow. thinking that their school children are being delivered places or being picked up in places. This technology is already creating an insufferable disaster of intellectual properties and lawsuits that I promise are forthcoming. That is going to give rise to phase three. All of this impossible to cipher, judicial and financial ruin, all of this identity fraud, crossover, company defrauding, organization hacking will result in civil frustration that leads to a powder keg that boils into phase three, the call for legislation, mm -hmm. the call for a way to sort this out, the call for a digital authentication number that is exclusive oh, yeah. uh -oh. to you and is uh -oh. provable yes. by oh, the my. federal government. Yes. Yep. And mm -hmm. if you do not have one, you are a bioterrorist. Mm -hmm. You are not allowed to yeah. borrow, buy, sell, or trade. You're not allowed to participate in the Babylonian system. You're not allowed to purchase groceries or to seek those in charge of whoever's running medical care centers. Mm -hmm. Access to your doctor. Where is your bio-authentication number? Now, how will this be controlled? I've thought of a couple of ways that this might get rolled out, and this goes into rabbit holes. We do not have time in this program to fully unpack, but this might come in the form of a holographic number, mm -hmm. which might give rise to the need, get this, for a government issue approved by the Fed's digital device, one that reads the holographic projection of this number that is specific to you, so that mm -hmm. when you're creating photographs, pictures, video, it is already in sync with the federal government database system that says, yes, Joe Horn at 6.28 p.m. on Wednesday, the 22nd of March, X number of years at this time, at this location, in the presence of, and it's on your mobile device. Mm -hmm. It's authenticated. It's you. It's provably you. Embedded in the metadata of the video or the image yep. that has been captured. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Embedded in the video that the federal governments are basically green lighting as authentically Joe. How might this interact with your technology? Imagine a chip in your hand or in your forehead. This is how they'll keep people from biohacking your number remotely. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, because the federal government will want control over who has access to these numbers, because this only works if these numbers carry great gravitas weight. Mm -hmm. This is not a fake ID to get into the bar at 16 without your parents knowing about it. Right. The consequences of messing with this federal authentication number will be dire. The feds will probably do something like your first offense, it's $250,000 plus all of your assets seized. And the second offense is federal prison for life. They will want people to be literally horrified mm -hmm. to mess with these numbers because if they become diluted, nobody will want one. Right. And you know, that's just as fake as everything else. No, 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 no. This is how they'll sell this. Mm -hmm. You can protect your assets. You can protect your buildings. Right. You can protect your ministry. You can keep doing the work of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. but you must have this federal authentication number or you don't play in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Yes. And it's yeah. to protect yeah. your reputation. It's yes. to protect your brand and your ministry. Yeah. The dichotomy of the situation that you're talking about with phase two, where the deep fakes become so commonplace that they're impact gets watered down is that as people begin to demand authentication, those who refuse authentication will look like they have something to hide. That's, That's right. right. And right. they will then be viewed as enemies of the state exactly. or terrorists. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you willing to authenticate? Right. You must be hiding something. That's right. 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 And that'll give credibility to other deep fakes that happen about that person. Absolutely. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to make sure that you know how you can get your copy of this incredible new book in the Summoning the Demon Super Collection. This amazing collection includes Dr. Thomas Horn's final book, Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast, that reveals how tech singularity will bring an all-powerful artificial mind to life. 
the trigger event that will make 666 the mark of the beast mandatory overnight. What the future of a marked society will look like the new face of transhuman supernatural warfare and how Christians must prepare for what is coming. But this incredible collection also includes, for a limited time, the brand new Dr. Thomas Horn Definitive Skywatch TV Collection. This unimaginable and historical TV anthology is valued at $99.95 all by itself. It contains a total of 96 episodes, over 45 hours of content on eight DVDs and is not available anywhere else or online. And includes classic series like Zenith 2016, The Milieu, Belly of the Beast, Saboteurs, The Wormwood Prophecy, The Messenger, Zeitgeist 2025, Legion, and more. But we're still not finished. You'll also receive Trajectory, Tracking the Approaching Tribulation Storm, this unprecedented masterpiece by legendary authors Dr. Thomas Horn, Terry James, Tim Moore, and others provides in-depth analysis of emerging topics like pandemic tidal waves, catastrophic weather changes, Mideast malevolence, and so much more. This unprecedented collection sold separately holds a retail value of over $140. Yours now for your donation of only $39.99 plus shipping and handling. So don't delay. You can scan the QR code on your screen right now using the camera app on your phone for instant access to this special collection. You can also visit us at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985 and ask for the Summoning the Demon Super Collection now. Earlier, Joe, you said something about the, especially young people today who are on their devices and they see everything. Mm -hmm. They are starting to lose empathy. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, now, yeah. picture an entire generation that has lost empathy. They need to be shocked by something, right? right? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's the generative AI version of an alien invasion. And the alien looks real. The invasion looks real but they're benevolent and they want to take over. Sure. They want to upgrade us. So now we are more than human, but yeah. only those who are more than human get the mark, get the chip, mm. because only you are special enough to get it. And everybody wants to be special enough to get it. And that lack of empathy, bring that in. Wow. And you yeah. talked about those who don't have the mark, being arrested are those with the mark who misbehave. Yeah. What if it's more than jail time? What if it's oh, executions, yeah. mm -hmm. public executions, wow. yeah. mm -hmm. where you're brought in? That person's not chipped. That person's less than human. That person's an animal. We saw hints yeah. of that during the lockdowns directed against people yes, who had did. opted not to be part yeah. of the wide-scale human yeah, trials. The collective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're a threat to all of us, and so they need to be quarantined and mm -hmm. They're yeah, less than isolated human. from humanity. Yeah. They're less than human. Yeah. yeah. It happens very, very quickly. That yeah. switch can be flipped. Mm. Oh, yeah. it's terrifying what humans will do given the right impetus. Right. There have been studies, actually, and I'm not going to get too far away from our main point today on this, but um, there have been studies that mankind, when given a little bit of power or a little bit of prestige over mm -hmm. another demographic, can lose empathy and become evil very quickly. There oh, are mm -hmm. studies on the Lucifer effect, mm -hmm. and we've written on that at different times, but it's, it's definitely something that empirical data has lent itself to, for mm -hmm. sure. Right. And in all of this division, uh, what Sharon was referring to, where it's, you know, if you're not in with this crowd, mm -hmm. the, the thing is, is there will be a lot of Christian people that are also a part of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. We saw that right. when the masks had to come on during COVID. Sure. Mm -hmm. We saw Christian people acting very aggressive towards those who would not wear right, a mask. Right. Mm -hmm. And if that's just one little tiny yeah. sign it's a of what, I mean, it's one little it's tiny. Human nature. It's a right. blip it of what's ahead. It's our Absolutely sin, sin it nature. Is. It is. 
So while we're talking about human nature, right. I'll explain something really briefly to truncate. Mankind has always wanted to create something that could then be elevated to a status of being worshipped. Yes. Uh -huh. So that they yeah. could sit below it and go, look at this amazing thing I created. Mm -hmm. But they could sit above it and go, look at me, I'm like God. Look at this God-like thing I created. Mm -hmm. And so right. it's kind That's of it. us feeding our own ego and our yep. need for a God, but our pride and unwillingness to go to the mm -hmm. real God and so to create our own. And it's mm -hmm. kind of this little mm -hmm. ego trip we right. go on. If you look at what's being said right now about AI possibly positioning itself to become a religion, here are some things I want to say. These are headlines that are coming from both secular and religious sources. I'm just going to read a handful of headlines. Former Google and Uber engineer is developing an AI god. That's in quotes. Mm. Oh. Why humans will happily follow a robot messiah, religions based on AI. Wow. Jesus. Oh, my. Religion that worships artificial intelligence wants machines to be in charge of the planet. Inside the first church of artificial intelligence, the rise of AI. Give me that new time religion. Oh. This is becoming a thing. Now, why? Why is, why is there a religious fascination with the spirit of AI? First of all, we don't know what's going on in that black box. And so that kind of right. gives us yeah. something to think about. But I'm going to compare super quickly uh, some things about God, some things about AI. God knows all. AI knows all things at warp speed. God, we have faith that he has the answers. AI can get all the answers. God is all seeing. AI is all seeing, all surveilling. God wow. created and knows the order of everything. AI has superhuman abilities to problem solve or run analytics. God is a provider, but AI will be the gatekeeper of supplies. Mm -hmm. God has always been, but AI has all the history records of humanity. God surpasses human intellect and knowledge and understanding. AI surpasses human knowledge and intellect. So do you see how we actually, I mean, as a humankind, not we here, like the idea of creating this mm. thing that gets to be God that we get to sit above and yes. below. Mm. Simon and Garfunkel, the sound of silence, and the people bowed and prayed Ooh, wow. to the That's, neon oh, God wow. they made. Oh, my yes. goodness. Wow. Wow. Yes. The bioethicists that are weighing in on this topic say that a lot of this question of what's going to happen boils down to the concept of personhood. Mm -hmm. And to, to basically boil this down to the nuts and bolts, it used to be defined by how human are you. Now, mm -hmm. personhood is defined by how well can you interact, how intelligent are you, how can you communicate and interact mm -hmm. with the things mm -hmm. and the machines around you. If personhood is what defines a person, then now suddenly the machines that are more intelligent than us are more human than humans. Oh my wow. God. Yep. That's yes. crazy. Yes. And that leads to one final thing, and I'm sorry to interject here. I know we're running out of time, but if you wind up with non human persons, you also then wind up with non person humans. humans. Mm. Mm. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are only, again, just scratching the tip of the surface of what is in the book, Summoning the Demon, Artificial Intelligence and the Image of the Beast. Join us next week when we discuss the realities of a large-scale deception carried out by a sentient AI on its human creators. What is the potential reach of a sentient AI should it decide to turn on its programmers? For everybody here in studio, everybody on panel, I'm Joe Artis Horn. Keep your eyes on the prize, which is Jesus Christ. We'll be back.